All right. So the the last thing I want to talk through uh, here today is identifying polynomials. So I mentioned you'll be asked to identify power functions and then polynomials. Make sure you don't mix up the two. Okay. So a polynomial has this form right here. And so I'm going to write some examples of polynomials uh, that don't have, that aren't full of a, a bunch of variables with subscripts okay, to illustrate this. But a polynomial is going to be a function that's written where it has a real number coefficient for every term. Because okay, it can be positive, negative, it can be radicals and fractions as well for the coefficient. Okay, and, but the x power has to be a whole number. Okay, so when we're dealing with the powers of x, they have to be whole numbers. Okay, and so that's sort of the distinguishing factor. And you can have sums of them and differences of them, but um, the powers have to be whole numbers. And a, again, a whole number is anything from, any counting number from zero up, zero, one, two, three, four, five. No negatives, no fractions, <coughs> and when you're dealing with the uh, powers. So it is possible that the a values could be zero. Okay? Notice here there's no x squared term. If that's the case, the, the coefficient of that or the a value would be a zero. And then it's also <coughs> possible for the power of your x to be an unwritten zero. So here, if I think of this as x to the zero power, so you can barely see that there, uh, but x to the zero power is just a value of one, negative three times one is just that negative three. And so it doesn't matter, it still fits the rule. <coughs> the power of x as being zero is still considered a whole number, okay, and so it fits this rule. Okay. The, main thing, the main thing to distinguish here is that uh, for a polynomial, unlike the power functions, okay, the power can't be negatives, can't be fractions that don't simplify to an integer or whole number. It can't be uh, irrational numbers like square roots or pi, okay? uh, but in the power functions, they can. But in the power functions, you can't have sums or, or differences of terms. You can only have just that one single term. Okay? All right, so what I want you to do is just really quickly try these five. See if you can identify which of them are uh, polynomials. And then I'll go through them, discuss any differences or any uh, issues, and then I'm going to have you try the last one. So for this next set here, and I added one more to test, we're looking to see are they polynomials. Okay, so what about just a constant 12? Does that fit this rule that all the powers of x are whole numbers? So this is an unwritten power of x to the 0. <coughs> right, this is unwritten x to the 0. Is 0 a whole number? It's the first whole number. Okay, so that one fits. So this would be an example of a polynomial. What about 12 to the x? No, the x's have to be the variables as, uh, multi as factors, not as the power. So that's a no. And what about 1 over x squared plus 8x minus 12? As a whole, the x squared plus 8x minus 12 is in the denominator of a fraction, which means if we were to move them up, it would change their signs to negative numbers. So it's not going to be whole numbers, so this is a no. Now, if we were to take this expression in the denominator by itself, 
would x squared plus 8x minus 12, if we took it by itself, would that be considered a polynomial? Yes, but not in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, what about 8x plus 2x? Combine your terms, you get 10x. The highest power, the, all the powers are whole numbers, so this one is yes. And then what about 10x cubed, or 10x cubed plus 2? Power of 3, a power, an unwritten variable power of 0. Those are both whole numbers, and so that would be yes as well. Now, if we were to go through these and again distinguish them or compare them to power functions, would 12 be a power function? Yes. What about 12 to the uh, x? No. What about 1 over this quantity x squared plus 8x minus 12? No. What about uh, 8x plus 2x? Simplifies to 10x. Real number, real number, nothing added or subtracted, so yes. What about 10x cubed plus 2? Nope, something's being added, so that's no. And then what about 2 over x cubed? We could think of this as 2x to the minus third. Would this be a power function? Real number, real number, nothing added or subtracted. Yes. And then finally, this last trinomial, this three-term polynomial, is not a power function. All right. All right. The first example, 9x plus 6x, gives you 15x. Is that a polynomial? Yes. Would it be considered a power function, too? Real number, real number one, nothing to add or subtraction. So again, this would also be a power function. And what about 3x cubed plus 6? Is that a polynomial? Power of 3, an unwritten power of x to the 0. Those are both real numbers, or both whole numbers. So yes, would that be considered a power function? Nope, has something added and subtracted. x squared minus 2x squared. Those are the same term, so we can combine them. Negative x squared. And so when we look at those, is this considered a uh, polynomial? The power is a whole number, so yes. Is it a power function? Unit coefficient and power, both real numbers, so it's also a power function. What about the square root of x minus 2? So again, this is x to the 1 half power minus 2. So we don't have a whole number power, so this is not a polynomial. Would it be considered a power function? Because it's being has something added or subtracted, it, Neither, it's not a power function either. Okay, what about 3x to the one-third? A rational power is not a whole number, so it's not a polynomial, but would it be considered a power function? Real number, real number, nothing added or subtracted, so yes.